sooner or later it's gonna be bigger than fiat and replace fiat. There's nothing bad about the free market. It will rise. It will go to 250k. There's a reason why Elon Musk or Michael Saylor are rich. Not because of socialism, because of capitalism. All socialistic and communistic regimes and dictatorships, Stalin, Mao, North Korea, Venezuela, it doesn't work. Germany has like 80 taxes. Why do we need all those taxes? Like, wh where's that money even going to? Where are we? Are we in a communistic, socialistic regime? Or are we in a Western world which has democracy? You are, I think, we talked about it before, uh, we talked about all my guests, and I think you're actually the youngest guest ever on the podcast guest. Maybe we find someday someone under 19, you're 19 years old, mm -hmm. and you accomplished something that a lot of podcasters already wanted to accomplish that are like 30, 40 years old, but they never had uh, Michael Saylor on their show. Uh, and you actually had Michael Saylor on your show, right? Yes, that's true. Um, it was funny. Uh, so... Originally, I planned to interview, like, let's say 15 people, 13 people, maybe maybe 16. And then I had the idea, and also Julian, the CEO of Relay, uh, told me, let's do 21, right? And I interviewed 21 people in Prague, like short interviews, like 10 minutes. The longest was with Julian, that was like 17 minutes, because we talked a lot. So, uh, um, and I had Sager, Jack Mahlers, Adam Beck, all those people on my list, which I wanted to. And I knew Sager's going to be the hardest because... You no, know, it's Michael Sayer. Like people are always around him. Whenever he comes out of a a panel or a show or whatever, they, they, it's like it's like really like ten people are around him and he can't really escape. And you have no, there's no way that you can get to him. And I was a little bit sneaky. Um, I first asked his manager or one of his managers, I think, um, if I could interview him. Like five minutes. That's all I need. Like short interview, right? And he was like, "How old are you?" Yeah, well, I'm 19. I have a podcast. Then he then he looked at his other um, the other managers and his uh, peop and the other people and was like and you're 19 and you have a podcast yeah okay let, let's do it go and ask him maybe if he says yes you're lucky if he says no it's fine at least I tried right and I then went to Sailor, asked him and he was like yeah well what you gonna want to talk about and I'm like Bitcoin obviously <laughs> we're we're in a Bitcoin conference what else should we talk about and you know and that was basically then. He was like, uh, well, he was thinking and then I was like, unless you're afraid to and you don't want to, it's fine if you don't want to. I'm, I'm okay with no, because no is no. Like, like, right? It's, it's a, it's a, it's a single, single word. It's no. And, um, he then said, well, no, no, let's go upstairs. Let's do it. Because he had like a room upstairs, right? Um, like where he could relax because people were around him all day. Um, yeah, we went upstairs. I did the interview like five minutes. I didn't ask him like hard stuff. I just asked him like, uh, why do you think we need Bitcoin now? And you always say Bitcoin is for everyone. Is it truly for everyone? Those questions, right? And yeah, that was basically, <laughs> that was basically it. And I also had Jack Mahlers, Adam Beck. I had, ooh, as I said, Julian from uh, the CEO of Relay. I had Joe Nakamoto or Joe Hall, as he's called in, in the normal British world. Uh, yeah, I had Isabella, I had, I had tons of people. I don't, I don't even remember all of them, but... Really cool. What, what did you take away from uh, Bitcoin Prime and all those interviews? Uh, that everyone is different and that there's so much that you can cover now in the Bitcoin space. There's not just Bitcoin itself and all the technical stuff and financial stuff. And you have a rich guy called Sager, which tells us the 21 rules, right? It's, it, it's, it's a whole spectrum. It's You can do arts with Bitcoin. You can have a podcast with Bitcoin like like you have and I have. Um, there's there's so much stuff now in the Bitcoin space. It's not just, I mean, you re do you remember like the videos and pictures of the first official conference? Like, oh, yeah. like, like just one guy and then like three guys in, like just listening to this one professor and now look at where we are. Like Nashville was a, uh, yesterday, I think, or two days ago. Yeah, two days. I mean, yesterday it also was, I started, I think, uh, four two, days ago. Four days ago, like yeah. Like Thursday. I mean, thousands of people are like coming to a conference talking about one single thing, and that's Bitcoin. Not fiat, not not shit coins, not Ethereum, not uh, Tether or whatever, just Bitcoin, right? So um, that, that's what I would take away. We, there's like a whole spectrum nowadays with Bitcoin. When I look at my audience, I see the average age of 45. I see 12 percent are between 55 and 65 and seven percent over 65 okay. uh, and when i look at other channels they are doing crypto things they're doing altcoin things they're doing meme coin things they usually have the younger crowd 
Mm-hmm. So I feel like younger crowds, especially 25 and under that. So like I'm 25, you're 19. So we are tra- uh, kind of in the same generation. Um, they This crowd is usually more in the altcoin sphere. They are doing some meme coins, uh, some shit coins, as we call yeah. it. Why didn't you do that? Like, why did you stick with Bitcoin? The number one thing I learned in my family. So my mom was an ex-banker, right? Uh, so... I kind of grew up in a capitalistic way, although I look socialistic. I mean, you can. Probably, I mean, the haircut t- uh, tells you everything about me. Um, no, but I grew up in a capitalistic way, and I grew up in a way that we learned there's a free market, and the ones who work more and work smarter, in a sense, get you know they get what they want, right? And we always had those rules. Um, if something costs like 100 euros, you have 300 euros on the side, so one for two for three, right? And that's how I grew up. And I think maybe because of that, I was not attracted to those scams. And I'm call, I'm gonna call it a scam. I mean, Ethereum for me is a scam because uh, it's it's not a decentralized. It's a centralized institution. Uh, the guy behind it, Vitalik. I'm not sure what's wrong with him. He looks like a zombie to me. But um, <laughs> so yeah, I would say because I grew up in a capitalistic way, maybe that's the reason. But I just think nowadays my generation and maybe also your generation, they're just stupid. They're greedy. They they want everything fast in life. And that's also funny. All the elderly people, like let's say above 30, 40, 50, I understand them. I can talk to them. So I can integrate myself into their view and perspective of how life is supposed to be and is, you know. I mean, a guy who worked 50 years just, you know, to get where he is now, like has a minimum rent, has a, I would say not a good life. I mean, Germany, for example, people um, have to go on the streets and get like garbage from the streets to make money with that, right? Mm-hmm. And I can I can understand those people and talk to those people. So um, that's what I would say. People my age are greedy and stupid. So, <laughs> um, but you know, it's, it's, it's life. It's also interesting you brought up uh, before we started recording a topic with Bitcoin and socialism and you are yeah. <laughs> definitely not a fan of socialism. And no. You also said like you look a little bit like a socialist <laughs> yeah. and I have to say yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> but but let, let's uh, like there, there's so much to uncover there because uh, first of all, uh, you said the Bitcoin uh, community is too socialist. Like why do you think that? Well, um, they always say tax the rich and uh, uh they say eco Bitcoin is for everyone, right? Um, or uh, equality, or um, we also have some Bitcoins which are like into gender equality and you know that whole LGBTQ shit. And I, it, trust me, I, I love maths, I love physics, I love science. And if you have a dick between your legs, sorry for saying like that, you're a man. And if you have a pussy between your legs, you're a woman. Just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with that statement. Sorry for saying like that. And we have certain people which are socialistic because they always say tax the rich. And I'm like, no, don't tax the rich. I mean, there's a reason why Elon Musk, for example, or Michael Saylor are rich. Not because of socialism, because of capitalism. It's a free market and they got what they deserved and they worked hard for it, right? So um, I just think maybe it's the space itself because we have Satoshi Nakamoto who created something that is fighting back against the system, which for some people is capitalistic, but for some people it's also communistic. I mean. Look at Funderline with AMLA. I'm not sure if you have heard about that, but uh, like it's like AMLA is like a secret finance police. The EU and Funderline wants to push, aka a, a digital, I, I would say a digital communistic regime. Mm. And so many people in the space are too socialistic because of Bitcoin. And I think that Bitcoin nowadays isn't what it has been like, let's say 10 years ago, because 10 years ago, it was really this, this jump on the train or you have lost. And nowadays it's like, yeah, jump on the train, but you have already lost because you have a system which already pushes digital IDs, digital currencies, digital shit, CBDCs, whatever. And because of that, people are like, oh no, fuck the government, fuck the institution, fuck capitalism, be socialistic. Everyone has to have equal rights, uh, equality. And th- I think that's the problem that Bitcoin is nowadays um, because of the system. Sorry, I'm 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 talk, I'm, I'm making like a whole thing now. But uh, because of the system that we are now in, it wasn't the same like it used to be from ten years ago. And I think that's the reason why we have socialism in the Bitcoin space right now because the system is so rigged. The system is so <sighs> communistic that 
uncapitalistic that people think our socialism socialism is a way out of that. And they also use this false miscon uh, misconception of equality and everyone gets equal rights, equal money. And that. no, that's not true. Because yeah, Bitcoin is for anyone, but is it truly for everyone? Is it for a, let's say, 85 year old who hasn't been great with technology all his life, who still knows the old ways, the, uh, I would argue, the better ways, you know, planting your own food, uh, being decentralized, you know, stuff like that. So, um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm making like a huge thing out of this, but um, I, I think it's important to, to talk about that because socialism is not great. You can ask, I mean, I asked tons of people in Prague, how was for you, how was it for you to live in a socialistic, communistic regime? And they said, no, it's bullshit. It didn't work. Capitalistic was, capitalism was the only way out of, out of that. So, uh, why is that? Like, uh, and I, I agree with you, <laughs> first of all. Uh, but, the, but why? And first of all, like, I'm, I'm really impressed. Uh, I feel like everyone under 20, uh, especially in that age under 20, has a hard time grasping capitalism. Mm. I think like capitalism is something that usually comes a little late in life where you grasp it. Mm. Uh, and uh, usually people between like 15 and 20, I mean, between 15 and 20 is a huge jump, but they usually uh, tend more towards socialism and more towards those ideals. And then all of a the sudden they have to make their own money and have to yeah. grow up and actually live in that world. And they're like, oh yeah, it, it, it makes sense that we have a free market uh, social, uh, capitalist system. So why does it make sense for you? It just makes sense for me because um, look at all, look at history. All socialistic and communistic regimes and dictatorships, Stalin, Mao, North Korea, Venezuela. It's bullshit. It doesn't work. I mean, look how, how horrific the system is. Look how, how should I call it? Uh, poor the people are in those, in those countries. I mean, North Korea, it's like, the, I mean, they have like the cheapest subway which is like crazy when you think of it that that actually sh subway is cheap and in Vienna it's like it's like not cheap or in in, in the UK it's also not cheap so uh, but <sighs> that's why I think I mean the fact is communism has never worked because mm -hmm. when you look at communism and socialism um, they always so Karl Marx basically the idea of communism and socialism came from capitalism and people don't like that when I say that or generally people don't like that when you say that but um, he took the bad things of capitalism or bad things and made them into socialism, communism, which is a abstract idea because what is so bad about capitalism? What is so bad about the free market? There's nothing bad about the free market. It's just the ones who work hard, who, who do what they do. They, they get that, they get rich at the end of the day. And those who are lazy and don't want to work, they don't get rich at the end of the day. And I think that's why we have socialism that we have, because we have lazy people who think it's unfair that some people are rich and some people are poor, which I get it. It's not nice that we have poor people in this world, but maybe you also have to look at why we have poor people in this world. I mean, we have a system like the state, which finances wars, prints money to finance wars. Uh, I mean, the US, for example, they, they have been involved in a war for like over decades now, Afghanistan, Syria, Yemen, Libya, uh, certain countries in Africa. I mean, uh, what else should I call it? Vietnam was like the biggest flop for the US government, especially after they uh, got rid of the gold standards in 1971. So um, I think that's that's the main reason that people are too lazy and that capitalism for them is like a enemy because they don't want to, because they, they want to make money out of laziness, which doesn't work. I saw that most people that are uh, afraid of capitalism and are on the socialist side, they usually are afraid of taking responsibilities. Yes. They usually are people who blame things on other people and not on themselves. Because I truly think when once you start uh, putting yourself uh, in, in the responsibility seat mm -hmm. and you are like, I'm responsible for things then you are more capitalistic in itself. Like you have to all of a sudden uh, look out for, for all the consequences and you have to be the better person. So that's uh, one one major thing for, for me. And it's it's also one reason why it usually comes later in, in, in life. And for me, it also came like, I think around like 18, 19 actually, uh, when I made that shift and I'm like, oh, actually, yeah, socialism does not really make sense for me. I mean, also the perfect example is with the Green Party, the Grüne Partei. Mm. Um, they're the most socialistic uh, parties I, oh, party I actually know. I mean, we always talk about uh, far-right extremism or, or uh, I mean, in Austria, it's the FPÖ that they always claim it's like far-right. I'm like, 
Is it truly far right or is there also far left winged parties? I mean, socialism and communism is far left. And we never talk about those because we always say, oh, it's good, but uh, nationalism is bad or being a populistic guy who loves his country and wants the best for his country is like a bad thing. And that's like the spectrum and the double standard that I see in sometimes also in the Bitcoin space that we have people like Sager who are capitalistic, who love their country or just, I mean, Trump is the best example. I'm just uh, Mr. Orange guy, as I always call him. Um, Mr. Orange guy Trump, who is capitalistic, who is who loves his country. Then we have oh, then we have socialism and cap, um, communism. And those people are the lazy ones, which don't like Trump or don't like capitalism because they think it's unfair that he's rich, right? And that's the thing. Socialism, communism always take examples of capitalism, make them worse or think, they make them good, but when actually it's it's like it's like worse. It's like it's like horrible, and they even take profit from capitalism. I mean, look at Vienna. Vienna is like like the city is like really socialistic, and and we have like so many left wing parties here. That that say like oh yeah we have to be left we have to be good we have to be not right but then they take cap capitalism and right wing ideas to to fuel their politics to fuel their ideology to to even fuel themselves. I mean. If in socialism, what are you gonna live off? Mm. I mean, you, you of course you're gonna use capitalistic ideas and ideologies to to make money to make a living. So uh, uh, that's like those double standards, and I sometimes see those in the Bitcoin space as well. So sorry, I'm I'm, I'm talking I'm like, I'm like I'm talking like a whole thing here, but it's it's what I uh, love. So um, I, I love it a lot what you're talking about, and it's it's refreshing to hear it. Like you're really unfiltered and you're just going. Yeah, I love I'll it. Go straight. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, uh, look, what else can you do? It's uh, The world is crazy. It's not what it used to be like 50 years ago, I would say. But um, there's how, it, I mean, maybe also technology is a problem nowadays because we have too much technology. We have too much uh, uh, phones, computers, TVs. I mean, I, I remember as um, my grandpa told me that once when the first TVs came out, you didn't sit, you didn't, I mean, he, the first thing that they did when the TV came out every day, seven o'clock in the morning, TV on, watch the news, right? And what was the news financed by? By the government, mm. by by those parties, by, I mean, best example is CNN is financed by the Democrats, right? So, uh, or Fox News is financed by the Republicans, right? And then they, they those news are going to push their ideology and uh, we have more left-winged uh, um, mainstream medias, right? So they're not really far a lot of far right uh, winged uh, uh, media outlets, but they're more left wing. But uh, and I think that's also a problem that uh, we have too much technology nowadays. I mean, I have a phone. I mean, you have a phone as well, right? So uh, you even have two with you. Uh, yeah, I have two. <laughs> one's my finance phone. One's my, like my social media phone. So uh, I'm kind of <laughs> kind of separating it. But um, but I stop uh, being on on. I mean, I'm Twitter. I use Twitter, I use YouTube, I use social media, right? But I, I also stopped it and reduced it for, uh, because sometimes it's just bullshit and propaganda, right? So, well. But I feel like with social media, it, uh, it, it, it's a hard topic because like before social media, uh, it was just like a local newspaper yeah, and exactly. it was even easier to manipulate. Uh, now you have a lot of uncensored kind of sources like we have rumble and nostro yeah. uh, that are really i think kind of the gold standard of uncensoring but then there's also mainstream uh like x it's it's not perfect but it's like really close to being uncensored it there's still censoring going on uh mm -hmm. there's still an algorithm but it's 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 way better than other platforms then there's like youtube there's podcast platforms there's your own websites uh, which is also an interesting topic and then Facebook, I feel like it's, it's the, yeah, worst, yeah. the worst of yeah, them it's all. The worst. Uh, TikTok is, is definitely also not good. It's a mind virus, as I think. Uh, but uh, I feel like, in a sense, it's also the free market. Like, you can definitely also get yourself a YouTube feed that's really good. Yeah. But because when you search for the right accounts, it's just, you have to put in the work. <laughs> yeah, well, yes. Uh, I think... Uh, I want to go back to... Um, to freedom of speech, because freedom of speech nowadays isn't what it used to be 50 years ago. Because 50 years ago, as you said, there was no way to double check if it's true. It, either tr it was true or it wasn't. And back then you would have been like a conspiracy theorist, like with, you know, the aluminium head foil thing. And nowadays it's not, it's not, it's not that anymore. Because we have so many sources, we have WikiLeaks with Julian Assange, 
And I think his case especially proved how we can fight back against corruption, against lies. And um, I mean, Rumble is the best example. I mean, I upload all my podcast videos on, on Rumble because I know that certain things on YouTube are censored. Like I, I told you before the episode, how they even, mm. um, I mean, my number one end question always was how what how are you thoughts on Christine Lagarde or it's a band and everyone was like oh yeah that bitch or fuck it's a band and then YouTube one day wrote me oh, I can I can't ask that anymore it's too it's too political it's not nice I'm like oh well there you go that's why I'm uploading on Rumble right and and nowadays we have that so um that's one positive side of having technology that you always have multiple opportunities but it's still technology they they they, they track you they it's not decentralized, you know, it's, it's, if, if I would have a decentralized system or my own server or my own laptop or computer, because certain uh, people know how to do that stuff, then it's something else. But if you have like a MacBook, which is owned by a company, right, which is, which has its own servers, software system and all that stuff on it, and you use that, it's more of a tracking tool than, um, I mean, my phone is also my tracking tool, right? It, 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 but you know what I mean? It, it's, it's. It's just like you have that thing which tracks you and then you, and you have that thing which doesn't track you and then you're like in the middle and you use both of them. So yeah. it's 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 a little bit like a when when you talk to people about that they think you're a nutter, like you're a crazy guy. <laughs> or, or like or like, okay, yeah, which rabbit hole did you go down? And I'm like, well, it's it's a fact. The NSA and CIA spies on us every day. And things that we say on the internet, they you can't get rid of those anymore. I mean, if if I would say, uh, I think, uh, I don't know, Michael Sagers is uh, not nice, it will be on the internet for forever. Or it, it, or if I would say uh, Donald Trump is a great guy, it will be on the internet forever and people will charge you on based on that. So um, it's a little bit, uh, it's a hard topic when we, when we talk about the internet because it has changed like so much in past 30 years, I would say. So do, do you think that uh, it is about to get better or is it not getting better? Like the internet, free speech, uh, we have some, some like Elon Musk and X for me was a step in the right direction. I think yes and no, because in Europe, no. In the US and I would argue the UK maybe also, because UK, for me, UK was never part of Europe, although they were in the Europe, in the European Union once, but um UK is more like international because Europe is like a thing of its own and, you know, including all the, the Eastern countries like Russia, Poland, Ukraine, and all those. There I think no, because especially with stuff like AMLA or with their lost digital IDs or, I mean, I mean, Elon Musk even said himself the other day on Twitter that the EU tried to um, center him by making a deal, which Instagram, Facebook and all those companies have made with the EU, which when you say something against the EU, against politicians, they delete your account and they probably arrest you or, or send you like a notice from the police that, hey, you can't say that again, right? And, and Musk doesn't do that because he's international. So I would say him and Twitter, it's like a yes, it's heading in a good direction, but on the international system, not on the European system. Because Europe, they, they want to keep us small, they want to destroy its own people for some reason. They, they don't like their own people. So um, it's kind of, it's kind of Europe, no, but the international level, yes. So uh, it's, it, it's sad, but it's the truth, you know? So um, Europe is not the thing that it used to be like 20 years ago, so. So we should get out of the, of the European Union. Yeah, definitely. I mean, with AMLA, especially the finance police, which by the way, if you own 3K a month, let's say like that, and you buy a back for 4k they're gonna call you and check your transaction and i'm gonna say hey you bought a back for 4k how can you own a back for 4k when you only make 3k for a living right where did that extra k came from and that's how far we have gone in the eu that we point fingers at countries like china north korea russia for being dictatorships right but then we do the same tactics like they do or we did this or we we use the same tactics like uh certain people did in world war ii in germany so uh I'm not gonna say his name because I don't wanna. I don't want you to get in trouble. But um, yeah, it's just it's you is just a for me you is heading into a digital communistic regime, aka the CBDC, aka social credit system. So it, it, it's hard, but um, once you understand it and once you go deep down the rabbit hole, uh, it's like no way back. So uh, 
I mean, I left Europe a, a few years ago, three, four years ago, because it was just enough, especially with COVID and uh, the vaccines and all that shit. So, um, so I would say Europe, Europe is a sinking ship currently. Mm-hmm. And uh, countries that join the EU, um, they're on the verge of uh, getting uh, bankrupt. I mean, look at Germany, for example. Germany is, uh, Germany is like a, it's going bankrupt, in my opinion. And it already is. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin. Keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange. And you can get a 5% discount with the code ROBIN at the checkout. Visit bitbox.swiss slash Robin to get your bitbox. And if you really want to bulletproof your self-custody setup, your security setup, and maybe even your citizenship setup, you have to talk to the Bitcoin way. If you go to the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash Robin, you get a 30-minute free call where you can dive deep with them if your self-custody setup is secure, if your citizenship is secure or maybe might be improvable, or your digital footprint in general is secure. They are the experts in cybersecurity, in Bitcoin self-custody, and how to be a secure, sovereign individual in general. How bad was that Germany uh, sold the Bitcoin? And and now, a a few weeks later, it's very clear that the US is not selling their Bitcoin at all. Rather, they are buying probably more. Yeah, and uh, I mean, Germany itself is like stupid, you know, they they have stupid. I mean, the, the thing with 12 months owning crypto or Bitcoin, and then if you if you own them 12 months, you can sell them or keep them like, like imagine that rule. It, it's your money and the state tells you what to do with your money. Like, that's why I say Germany and the EU are falling in sinking ship because they have so many laws, so many <sighs> stupid uh, things they, they want to tax you on. I mean, Germany has like 80 taxes. Like, mm. I mean, I have friends calling me, hey, dude, look at that. I mean, look on your bills. Um, I'm not sure how it is in Austria, but look on your bills. The, like the, a few days um, a few days ago, I looked on a bill, like tax on this, on this, on this, on this. And I'm like, why do we need all those taxes? Like, wh- where's that money even going to? It's go to? It goes to the state. It's not even going to the company. It goes to the state, right? So um, I would say the EU and the laws with taxes, and it's just, it's just too much for people. And I think people are getting annoyed by that as well. Do taxes in general make sense or is every tax, even a small one, uh, unnecessary? Look, I'm not against taxes because historically taxes have been invented for a greater good to 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 found a community. I mean, if I pay a tax into a community or into a, um, let's say, uh, in a, into a state, I'm like, let's say, I live in Texas and I pay and I pay like taxes for the state of Texas, right? Then it's fine for me because I I pay the taxes for the state of Texas, which is a community which everyone takes care of, right? But if I pay like not just that tax, if I also pay income tax, tax on my uh, source of living, tax on uh, on what I own, you know, there's where I think there's, there, there, that's too much, right? That's like, like, sorry, I mean, why should I pay income tax? Why should I pay, why should I generally pay taxes if they just print money out of thin air, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I would say if I pay taxes for, for um, the community or like a council, or, then it's fine for me. But if I have to pay tax on like, to the state, which then uses that money to send weapons to Ukraine, for example, th- then for me, it makes no sense at all. Then it's just a scam. And especially the climate change scam, you know, how they, since 50 years, they told us, uh, all c- the climate is gonna rise, uh, the sea level is gonna rise, uh, but the Statue of Liberty in New York, is, isn't, is, it's still not underwater, right? So mm. it's still above water, sea levels haven't rise for like a decade. I mean, if sea, le- sea levels would rise, half of California would be gone. And I know that banks like JP Morgan, they would also have like insurances for that, which I don't. Like all the central banks don't have insurance for that. I mean, we we even had um, Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, saying that climate change is like a scam. Like I saw an interview the other day where he said it's a scam. It, we don't have insurance for that because it's never going to happen, right? So, um, and it resulted in one more thing, taxes. Over 50 years, they have been saying that. And look how 
more taxes we got, look how uh, more laws we have. I mean, they even uh, in certain states in the U.S., you have to have like a electric vehicle, aka a Tesla. Otherwise, uh, the state of California comes to you and says, "Oh, if you don't buy a Tesla now, we're gonna take away your car." Like, like, wh- where are we? Are we in a communistic, socialistic regime, or are we in a Western world which has democracy? And I'm doing that because we don't have democracy. It's a, it's a false ideology. So, um, but yeah. <laughs> Is Bitcoin here to uh, save us? Yes. <laughs> I just, I might, I'm not gonna say. Um, I'll just say yes because so, I talk too much. <laughs> so. <laughs> But yes, it's here to save us and uh, here to stay. I love it so much. Um, and we already have a lot of Bitcoin history. We have a lot of uh, like 15 years and it's already a lot of things happen. We all kind of have all the buckets that we need, like the countries that are in, the nation levels that are in, the institutions that are in. Um, where do you think Bitcoin is going in the next 20 years? Do we see a global Bitcoin standard in, in 20 years? I mean, you are now almost 20 so when you're like 40 which is like middle of the life like 50 is not the middle of the life for, yeah. for right now like 40 is it's kind of the middle of the life do you see yourself living on a bitcoin standard um yes but the only problem is i'm, I'm gonna expand on that that we still live in a fiat world and i'm not i'm not mad at, at someone who changes his bitcoin for fiat because we live in a fiat standard we have to make a living we have to pay rent right we have to pay taxes of although they are scam we have to pay certain bills so um but i think in 20 years especially now with what trump announced that he's gonna use it as a reserve if he does that and i think he will because trump has always when he said something that he will do he always did it um i think th- when it comes to that he's always a, a good guy so in a sense because he he does what he says um i think if pick if bitcoin continues its path like that and if we have countries like uh El Salvador, the U.S. taking it as a reserve, um, using it as a reserve, sorry, uh, then it will rise and it will continue to rise. Maybe there will be some years where it falls down again because people will sell it, people will uh, buy some more, right? Uh, but um, I think it will rise. It will maybe go to 150K, who knows, 250K, especially when p- countries like uh, the U.S. uses it as a uh, reserve and prints money to buy Bitcoin. Maybe then it will get higher, I don't know. But um, I think it's here to stay and I think it will have a big impact on our lives. Might not mm-hmm. replace the dollar because the dollar is like a huge thing. Uh, which, by the way, the Americans pushed by the wars in, in the Middle East and around the world. That's, that's typical American. They go to countries, they push their agenda, they dollar, and then if they don't accept it, they they finance wars But um, and, and start wars. I mean, we have seen it in Iraq, for example. Um, but yeah, uh, that's a different topic. But yeah, I think it's going to rise and continue its its way of growing and making our lives easier and better. But you don't think that the fiat system will be, it will always be there when you are here on the world? Um, maybe in 200 years it will be gone, but people in the Bitcoin space especially think that in 20 years there will be no fiat money anymore, we, 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 which is bullshit, it will always be there. I mean, at the moment there's no fiat money, families like the Rockefellers, uh, Vanguards, uh, Rothschilds, all of those families will be bankrupt and basically also the whole world. Because if they go bankrupt, the whole world is, go, is going bankrupt. And maybe that isn't a bad thing because then we have Bitcoin as an alternative, right? But um, I think 200 years maybe we Bitcoin will be bigger than fiat. But right now, in like in 20 years, 60 years, maybe no. Because it, fiat is just, oh, sorry. <laughs> fiat is a everyday thing nowadays. And we still have jobs. We still have to make a living, right? I mean, there are people in the Bitcoin space which pay the um their employees with fiat right mm. which buy bitcoin every month sell those bitcoin for fiat and then pay their employees in fiat right and that's not going to replace uh I've, i think bitcoin's not going to pre- replace fiat soon but maybe in 200 years maybe once we we mm-hmm. maybe i'm i'm I, i'm gonna be dead by now so how should i know but um i think not soon but sooner or later it's gonna be bigger than fiat and replace fiat Amazing. Uh, one question that I have in my mind a lot of the times when I, I go with, with Bitcoin podcasts, uh, especially when we talk about Bitcoin and freedom, uh, there's always this concept of having freedom and there's different kinds of freedoms like there's time freedom, mm-hmm. there's financial yes. freedom, there's different concepts of freedom. Um, how, how do you define freedom for yourself and would you say you are free? 
yes. Um, for me, freedom is if I don't have to do what do what people tell me because I don't like that. I, I never liked it when people told me what to do, especially during the pandemic. People told me to wear a mask. I didn't wear a mask. I was not vaccinated. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to be open about this because that's who I am, right? So um, I think that I think I'm free because I can do whatever the fuck I want. I can do whatever the fuck I want because of Bitcoin. So I can even swear. I, I, I guess I couldn't do that in the old system because people were like, oh, don't swear. It's so rude. I'm like, no, it's not rude. It's a, it's a word. It's like, a, it's like fuck is a word. It's, it's nothing bad to say fuck, right? So um, I, I guess um, I'm free and I have a certain amount of freedom because of Bitcoin. And because mm -hmm. um, me and my family got out of a system which is corrupt which, as I said, uses tax money to finance wars, sending weapons to Ukraine, potentially starting a nuclear war, aka World War Three, for some reason at all, because they have money in Ukraine, or or I don't know what's going on there, but uh, I would say a certain amount of freedom is there because of Bitcoin, and I am free because of Bitcoin. What steps are you taking to protect this freedom? <sighs> I guess, if I want to be honest, um, my way to protect my freedom is to be decentralized. Yes, I have a phone. Yes, the government can track me. But I would argue if you have your own server, if you have your own uh, node running, that's the best way to protect your freedom. And if you also plant your own food. Because nowadays we are being poisoned with the supermarket food, which they claim to be bio neutral carbon neutral I'm like since when does an apple have to be carbon neutral or or has to be i mean it's an apple you eat it it's it's delicious it's uh it's sweet it's nice and i grew up in a way that i always planted my own food i grew my own food i grew my potatoes i grew my strawberries my onions my tomatoes uh tomatoes sorry i have to i have to say tomatoes i can't say the i can't i can't say, say it in the american way uh, i grew my own tomatoes strawberries um I think that's a way to protect your freedom, being decentralized, being not reli reliable on a system which uh, poisons us with with food and uh, and with stuff that's not good for our bodies. So um, and our minds also as well. So, mm. so. What are you currently doing? Are uh, you probably in school, university, or is uh, no. are you already out? Um, I finished school. Um. It's funny. I when I grew up, I always wanted to be like a lawyer or doctor or like a, like a lobbyist or politician. But nowadays, I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do that anymore. <laughs> it's like it's like those areas, are like the most corrupt areas areas in the system, where where people get paid like daily. I mean, the UK government, especially like the 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 parliament, is like one of the most corruptest corrupt uh, corruptest corrupt most corrupted there is in the world. Sorry. Um, so I always felt like politician, but nowadays I'm like, no, no politician, no, no lawyer, no lobbyist, no doctor, nothing. Um, so yeah, I finished school and I'm free. I can do whatever I want. So, uh, currently I have a podcast called Noma Podcast together with my mom and we have an English show and German show. So, um, I'm more focused on that, but currently I'm also working on my own fashion brand, mm. which I will try to implement Bitcoin as a payment system. And I'm currently working on the websites and all that stuff. So it's still, and, and the clothes as well, the design. And I, that, that's like my hobby and what I love. Uh, so yeah, but um, not in school, not in university, not in a system which uh, pressurizes its people and tells them what to do. So I'm free. I'm a, I'm a nomad. I can travel wherever I want to. And I have to benefit because I'm half Swiss, half Austrian. I have both passports, right? So I'm not restricted to traveling to certain countries. So I can just travel and that's cool. You have Swiss, Austria, you have UK. Uh, what's, what's your favorite or any other countries in there? Um, UK is my favorite because UK is like, it's like the, for me, the UK, especially London, is like the coolest city there is. Um, the people in the UK are open-minded. For me, the UK is the, is the everyone always says, ah, oh, the UK, uh, its financial market is like not big. I'm like, no, it, it's like, I mean, City of London runs the UK and City mm -hmm. of London tells the the PM, the the banks, what to do, and I feel safe there. If when I'm whenever I'm there, because it's it's a stable. They have a stable or stable economy. I mean, I'm not sure if everyone has a stable economy nowadays, but uh, I prefer the UK. From then, I would argue Vienna and Austria, because um, you Austrians are always you're so loving and caring. And for me, it's home 
because I have roots from Austria. So, but Switzerland, ah, uh, Switzerland is like I I stopped with uh, being friends with Switzerland. A oh. free no. no <sighs> It's always funny when I talk about this because I, I say it a lot, but Switzerland is always in the middle. You have good guys and you have the bad guys. And Switzerland is always switching in between. Um, they did it with the with with a German guy in World War Two. They financed him. They gave him weapons. And then suddenly they were like anti this when the US came in and freed everyone in World War Two. So um, Switzerland always financed the, the terrorism in this world and then also the good guys, you know, so... Uh, that's why I left Switzerland. That's why I'm I'm done with Switzerland. Uh, maybe I will go back one or two times to visit friends or my grandparents. But um, Switzerland is not neutral. Let me tell you that they always claim they are, but they're not. They always finance both sides of wars. So um, that... it's also interesting. I didn't think about it, but UK like left the EU. Do you think it was a really good step? Yes, because uh, the EU just when the UK was in the EU, they had so many restrictions. They had so much. Uh, wrong going on and now that they're out of the uk yes brexit was bloody it was messy but it was the best step to get out of the eu because look at the eu now it's a falling sinking ship right everything in the eu goes like that everything in the eu that you touch is not it's not good anymore but when you touch something on international level or in the uk there you go it it, it's much more freer and people always think oh yeah but the uk rainy uh um, oh, not so nice, you know, uh, British food is bullshit. I'm like, have you been to UK? Have you seen their numbers? Have you seen how life is better than ever before, before they were in the EU? It was like, not good. It was like, uh, I mean, I don't even need to talk about this like in more detail, but it's just, I see it with my eyes every day. It's better for, for certain people, especially for the working class people. Because before they were in the EU, it was like horrible for them to, the, the just also tax wise it was horrible for them but now but now it's better i'm not sure how it is with starman now and with labor taking over because i'm not a big fan of labor because they're my opinion i mean we they replaced one wef puppet with the another i mean rishi sunak and and uh keir starmer are both uh in the world economic forum and both controlled by Klaus Schwab. but um that's a different story so uh but yeah it's it's much more better nowadays especially mm. because of city of london said so because City of London back then and Nigel Farage, um, they do, they were the ones pushing for Brexit because especially the the companies in the UK that are there, th there's a reason why they are there because of the taxes they can avoid because of the all these laws that you has implemented and it's like it's like a, a I would I would say um, the UK is a way to get around of taxes you know especially in the EU I mean many many companies that are based in the EU are now moving towards the UK because of the taxes, because of the laws, because of AMLA, the finance police. Uh, so sorry for, for talking so much, but uh, it, it's, a, it's an important thing to know. Why? Yeah, it's really interesting also with, with UK. Uh, I mean, there's also a, a great thing like Swiss is for me, like the Austria that is outside of the EU. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you, you're also saying it, uh, you don't like Swiss that much and you like UK more. Yeah, because the, the Switzerland <coughs> has always been... Um, a black sheep although they're not in the eu they have laws with the eu they have uh contracts with the eu they i mean also the thing with amla where the finance uh, police thing they, they they're part of this because they are an efta state i think you call it so um switzerland has always been on both sides no matter what the left and right or middle up and down they have always been either good or bad or finance both of them so uh it, it's that's why I left it because it's it's not a, what they always claim it to be. They, they try to be uh, the best of both worlds, or my, it might be the the the, be, the the worst of both worlds. I don't know. Switzerland is an interesting topic for me, but yeah, let's. Uh, it's not. Yeah, let's, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, because I also uh, now think more and more about like, oh, where I actually want to live, because my life could be movable. Like, uh, yeah. I have a work that's movable. I have a girlfriend that's open to move. Uh, yeah, of course, I want to uh, visit all the time with family, but I don't have to be 12 months here. I can be two months here. I can yeah, be three months here. Uh, nomad is a big thing. And you lived up in a family that was nomad, or did your family, while you were uh, born, already decided to be nomad? So we lived in Switzerland until 20, 2020, yeah, 2021, so three, four years ago. No, wait, 20, yeah, 2021. And then... There was the point, especially during the pandemic, where we decided so enough is enough. We're going to travel 
we're not going to be in a system any longer that doesn't like us, that poisons us, uh, that sells us a solution and creates a problem at the same time, right? Um, that's what they did. They created a problem that then sold us the solution uh, without even thinking if it might harm people. But um, so yeah, so we used to live in Switzerland. It was it was lovely for me. It was nice growing up there. But as, essentially, I I seen enough. I had enough of the the neutral aspect, um, uh, the the financing of terrorism on both sides. And yeah, so twenty twenty one, we decided to travel around the world, being a being nomads. It's, it's, it gives you more freedom. It's hard because you don't have a garden where you can plant your own food or or stuff like that. But I mean, if I if I know where the farmer gets his fruit from or how he plants his food, then I'm I'm I mean I never bought stuff in the supermarket. I always go uh, directly to the farmer because decentralized, right? Buying stuff that's grown by itself or by someone, not uh, not in a in a lab or in a I don't know Bill Gates farm, which uh, I'm not sure what he does to those stuff there, but um, but yeah, that was 2021 was the was the year where we decided to live a nomadic lifestyle so and now you are all around the world or is there like any counters where you're like oh i'm for a few months here a few months there like um, how does it work i'm a lot in the uk because um because it's for me i love the uk so sometimes a lot of there but most of the times i'm also here in austria then a lot of a lot in spain and the cool thing with the uk is you can stay up to six months but if you're over six months you have to uh register you have to uh pay tax right and all that same stuff. in austria yeah no, is it not? Is it six months? Is it not three months because of the EU? Oh, it's interesting. Uh, I thought. I mean, I know that with taxes because I have been um, in Austria and Germany the last two years, mm -hmm. and both of the times I was more in Germany than in Austria, uh, and that's why I paid even taxes in Austria, but got everything of the taxes back because I was okay. only uh, uh, in, yeah. in, in Germany. That's why I say like half a year. I don't know with registering because I just registered uh, in the country where I lived in, uh, basically, but there's like this this tax thing where you when you are under half a year there, uh, you don't have to pay, pay taxes. taxes yeah. uh, so uh, especially when there's like a, a state like Germany where they have an um, agreement with the, those uh, stages where you only have to pay there. Okay, yeah. but that, you know that that's a cool thing. You can only stay up to three months or six months, and then there you go. You're back on the move again. And I think if more people would do that, I mean, the state always says it's to avoid taxes, and I don't see it that way. Yeah, maybe I'm a, maybe I am avoiding taxes when I live a nomadic lifestyle, but I am free. I can I can seek. I learned so much through traveling and through talking to people. Because you experience culture, and that's how we should do it. You exp you should experience culture. You should experience different views, different opinions, different religions. Uh, and th I think that's the coolest thing about being a nomad. Um, I can do whatever I want. I can, I can, I can be here for a month and then go back to UK, be there for five months, and then go from there to the US, be there for two months again. I think I have to apply for a visa though, but uh, that's a different story with the US. But. Um, I would definitely argue, uh, as long as you're under those six or three months, you're fine. Mm. You don't have to pay any tax. But if you're above that, then you're fucked. So, yeah. so because I mean, in Germany, if you're above three months, they 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 or if you even have a key to a apartment, they're gonna t they're gonna ask you, oh, you have a key for an apartment, or you're longer here than three months. You have to pay tax now. You have to register. Then mm. there you go. Then you then you're back in the system again. So um, it's like it's like a whole it's like a whole. Uh, thing that's like shit so is it three months in a row or is it three months in a calendar year i think it's three uh, three months in a calendar year i feel like uh i think so as uh, i'm not sure actually i think so but i have friends which have been like two months in germany and then went around the world like for a month and then came back and then those three months started again over yeah I, I, like for all my viewers now i go right now down this rabbit hole mm -hmm. okay <laughs> uh, and uh once i'm down there once i'm informed about all the stuff like, like where can you uh live and how can you kind of escape physically um how can i say it the the nation state uh um, decentralization like if, if you have bitcoin you decentralize your own finances your own money 
but that's not enough like if you're still like completely in the system and in one country all the time they can still uh, do yeah. a lot of things to you so like that's the next step for me being there also um let's say uh, maybe a, a weird word for that but untouchable like yeah like, just being a free bird like uh, i think who said it uh fred krug was on my podcast and he said like if a bird flies over a country border he does not pay taxes no no <laughs> he doesn't go to tall <laughs> be that bird <laughs> and exactly and the thing even with borders is why do we even have borders oh. yeah. I mean, I mean, if I want to travel to a country, why can't I just travel there? I mean, even even I I, I hate it every time. You no know, pass passport controls, or TSA and all that shit. When they, when they, you, you scan the passport and then or you give them the passport and then they look at you like you're some criminal because it's not like 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 I sorry why you, I even asked one is there a, I even asked one uh, like a few years ago is there a, I was like 16 around that so. Uh, I, I asked him, uh, is there a problem, sir? And he was like, uh, no, 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 no problem at all. It's like, yeah, why are you looking at my passport? Why, what, what are you looking for in my passport? Just scan the damn passport and give it back to me and say, have a nice trip. What's the problem? I'm allowed to travel. It's a free road. It's a free country, right? And he was so mad at me. He turned red and looked at me. Oh, oh okay, okay, here. He let me, you know. But I, I just feel like nowadays you, you, you get treated like some sort of criminal if you, if you even travel, or if you even uh, want to go to a country and stay there for a few months, um, it's yeah, like tr try to go over the borders with more than like a thousand euros in cash or ten thousand euros yeah, in cash or like just a little bit of gold. They will assume that you have stolen it and you want to smuggle it through yeah. the countries. Uh, they don't even consider that it's your money. Yeah, they, yeah. they consider like, oh no, no, you have stolen that money definitely. <laughs> Uh, and like that's why like if, if you don't have your uh, finances in Bitcoin like you are screwed <laughs> yeah and uh, how how can it, I mean they could potentially if you buy Bitcoin they could potentially lock in on the meme pool you know where you see the blockchain and all the transactions and probably see oh yeah that guy bought like 50 Bitcoin but that, how are they even gonna know it, I, it was me that bought Bitcoin hmm. they're not gonna know uh, and with gold or with fiat they can double they can double check that, right? But with Bitcoin, no. And I think that's why I, being a nomad and being a Bitcoin nomad, especially, um, it gives me sort of freedom that the state can take away. Mm. And uh, for me, it's it's like the coolest thing to be a Bitcoin. So, so because there's no uh, age gap. I mean, you're 25, I'm 19, and we're here sitting and talking in your podcast. And that's how it should be, right? That's not, there shouldn't be a gap between uh, generations. There should be the highest generation, like let's say a guy from generation X teaching the generation Y or Z uh, how life is supposed to go. So uh, that, that's cool for me. Yeah, that's really, really cool. I had also, yes, no, 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 yesterday, last week on my oldest guest and now you're my youngest guest. And, yeah, exactly. and in between the two of you, there are 56 years. <laughs> Uh, between oh, yeah. the the two of like 75 and, and 19 so it's like a huge step like even with me like there's 50 years in between so he's three times older than me and for you it's a little bit more than three times older it's it's, it's fascinating four times yeah oh wait no three three times no f for me he's four times older right four times or oh, five times <laughs> doesn't matter doesn't matter uh oh yeah it's it's five times maybe like four yeah four times four times it's the math is always wrong <laughs> yeah <laughs> Math is always wrong. <laughs> is always wrong. Um, All your models are wrong. Some are useful. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but that's how it should be. That should be the older generation teaches the younger generation. The younger generation teaches the older generation. That's absolutely. And, and you have that in Bitcoin. You, you don't have that in the fiat world. So um, absolutely perfect. Then that's I think the best uh, way to introduce our first end routine. Uh, what can we learn from you besides the things that we already talked about in the podcast? What can we learn from you? Oh, that even youngsters can be in the Bitcoin space and can be free. I mean, because my generation always thinks our oh, life is so hard, working is hard, or how. I mean, I I I can tell you multiple times. I was awake at night thinking what I'm what what I'm gonna do. I, like like how should I make money? How should I make a living? How should I pay tax, rent, and all that stuff, which I don't or still don't know. With nineteen, or actually starting to know a little bit, but um. I think what people can learn from younger people like me is that everything is possible, even at a very young age. I mean, uh, 
it's not just that you have to work and buy a house or or uh, work in a country for 30 years and then you're free no you can even be free now mm -hmm. and i mean i was in an online school so for me i always was capable capable of traveling and having school at the same time so uh i think one thing that should people take away from young people like me is everything is possible at a very young age so uh, that's what i would say uh, I, I love that a lot really really cool Perfect, then uh, let's get to our actual endodina. I've written down the question from the previous guest, like my endodina is uh, the question from the previous guest asked you a question uh, uh, without even knowing you. Okay. So the question from you, from the previous guest is, what is the most important educational value for you uh, to be a sovereign individual? Educate, oh, oh gosh, that's a good question. Um, educational value to be sovereign, okay. Um, I would say, learning what it means to be decentralized. That's for me the most important thing. Learning what it means to grow your, grow your own food. Um, I would even argue if you have to go hunting, go fishing, you know, because because what did uh, men do a thousand years ago when we still had like uh, cavemen and cavewomen uh, or they didn't have like a supermarket. They went out themselves and did their own work, proof of work. Don't trust, verify. So uh, I would say being decentralized and learning what it means, learning what proof of work means and don't trust, verify. That's that's my, that's what I would say. Amazing. Uh, thank you for being here. Before I let you go, uh, where can people find you and find more out about you? Um, so um, I have Twitter, I have Instagram, I have Noster, I have ooh, LinkedIn. So uh, I'm like, so um, I have to be careful because I can't, on certain platforms, I can't name myself Nomad for some reason because of restrictions or I don't know. So on uh, um, on Twitter, I'm called Podcast Nom 934 something. <laughs> I'm not sure. I will put it in the description. Uh, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe we should put it in the description. But uh, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Nostra, I'm yeah. on Instagram, LinkedIn. Nice. You can. So the podcast is called Nomad Podcast. And as I said, English show and German show. Um, my mom does the German one, I do the English one. And, uh, but sometimes we're still you know together if we have like a guest i'm in her show and she's in my show so uh but yeah um I'm, i have a link tree i'm gonna give you the link tree so you can link that yeah, temple that would be i, I will put the link tree in the, <laughs> in the description so I, i'm good with memories and remembering stuff but when it comes to my twitter and social media i'm, I'm never too i'm never too i always post the link tree and there you find me and all that stuff so uh okay, but yeah that's good but that's but, good. but yeah <laughs> but yeah Perfect then, yeah. Thank you, Janis, for being on. Also, for thank you for everyone watching and listening for being here today with me. Uh, as always, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye. Cool. Perfect. Ah.